We have reached an exciting moment in the course. We can finally understand how for statements really work. I told you about the for statement long ago. For name and expression, execute this suite. Has the following execution procedure. Evaluate the header expression, which must evaluate to an iterable object. For each element in that sequence in order, bind name to that element in the first frame of the current environment, then execute the suite. An iterable object is any object that you can pass to the built-in iter function. The way that you get the elements in a sequential order for anything that's iterable is you just keep calling next on the resulting iterator. So when executing a for statement, you should think of iter as returning an iterator and next as providing each item, and you get the same behavior. So it's equivalent to write counts equals one, two, three for item in counts print item, or to write counts equals one, two, three items is an iterator over the counts, try forever to get the next item and print it out, if there is ever a stop iteration exception raised, do nothing. Pass is a built-in statement in Python that does nothing. And you need it in this case because an accept clause requires a suite, but we want a suite that's empty, so we just write pass. Now the code on the right is a little bit different from the code on the left because it introduces the name items, whereas a for statement doesn't expose a name for the iterator but it does expose a name for each element, and that's exactly what we've done here on the right by saying item equals next items. So as long as an object is iterable, meaning you can pass it into iter and get an iterator out, you can use it in a for statement. Let's look at another example. A stop iteration exception is raised whenever next is called on an empty iterator. And we can use this in the implementation of a function. So let's say I want to write a function contains, which takes some iterable, some other iterable, and sees if the elements in the second one are contained in the elements of the first one in order. So here we can see s-t-e-n-t -E does appear within strength, so I'll return true. R-E-S-T, well, all these letters are in strength, but they're not in the right order, so I'd return false. And tenth also appears within strength, T-E-N-T-H. Here's an implementation. I define contains, which just takes in A and B that are any iterable. I create an iterator over the elements in A, which I'll call A-I. So that iterator remembers some position in A. Then I'm going to say for x in B, which automatically creates an iterator over the elements in B. The way I figure out whether stent is contained within strength is that I check to see if s and s are the same value. In particular, it says while next ai does not equal x, do nothing, which means if it is equal, which in this case, next AI is S, which would advance the iterator, and that equals S here, then I don't continue in the while statement. Instead, I'm finished, and so I go to the next element in the for statement, which means we advance this iterator. Okay, same thing happens again. I ask for the next AI, which is T. It turns out that that's equal to T, and so I advance both. Now X is bound to E. The next element in strength is not E, it's R. So when I say next AI does not equal X, I advance, and that's a true value, so I go through the while statement again, evaluating the header a second time, and here I'm asking whether E is not equal to E. E is equal to E, and so the iterator advances here by calling next, but the iterator advances here as well because I've gone to the next iteration in the for statement. The ends are the same, and so we advance both. Here, we call next AI does not equal x twice because it's true the first time but false the second time. 
And now I found every letter in B by iterating through the letters in A, so I can return true. Now, how do I know when B is not contained within A? Well, if I run out of letters in A without finding everything in B in order, then I should return false. And I'd write that as try to keep doing this, and if I ever get to the end of AI, which would raise a stop iteration exception by calling next AI, then I return false.